Hello, my name's Professor Phil Cleaver, and I'd like to talk to you today about um, hot metal typesetting and the use of that in education. This is just to say hello. I'm rather uh, very fond of animals, and this is actually the symbol for the type archive. Um, when I started life in uh, central London, the uh, world was a slightly different place than it is today with computers. Um, I've always liked animals, and uh, my the street photographer gave me two live monkeys and uh, a parrot, which is with me when I'm five years old, and took my photograph and then gave it to my mum. And she actually bought it. I think it's the only photograph she ever bought. I mean, I still love animals, but I, I sort of now go around the world um, when I can, and then I enjoy eating them. And really, it's just to say, please sit back, and uh, this won't take very long, and I hope it's enjoyable. Um, I'm going to talk about the use of metal in education and the term using metal typesetting and getting students to actually enjoy the fun of printing. When I was at the Central School in the 70s, I was taught by um, Anthony Froshark. And this is one of the, in my sketch pad, he was explaining to me how to set a split fraction um, because I did obviously it's not easy in metal. And he was actually telling me founders type is better for using. In those days, you had to draw everything because there's no, you couldn't get any typeset, you couldn't, there's no way of visualizing it. So for layouts or for, uh, for presentations, you drew it. And this is a drawing of a 20 by 30 poster in Marina script and Caslon I did. And this just shows a detail of it. And this would have, after the, the client had hopefully accepted it, they, this would have gone to a compose, uh, to a comp room, to a composing room for check, for, um, for setting. It's a couple of jobs I just want to got back in, where I got back into using metal after, and wood for after a number of years. And one came about by a, camp, a group called 26 Writers. And they have an award ceremony every year for emerging writers and for established writers. It's a bit like Dean AD and the design awards, but they wanted a trophy. Uh, and I said, as long as it wasn't perspex, I'd be happy to design a trophy. So I came up with the idea of actually giving them, when you won an award, they actually got a chase with the type in it. Uh, and that's what you put on your, on your mantelpiece. Uh, that's the 216, 216 award. And so for, I began developing this each year. And then, of course, I think the actual trophies look fantastic. Uh, it's pretty random what type it is, because depending on what comp composing room I am, I have to actually say to them, can I have the type and you're not getting it back? Uh, that's using Gill. Um, and then I started proofing and printing these um, chases, but in a dip upside down and back to front of things to form certificates um, and to actually do a, the awards. And, and what I also began to play with is this thing which you can do when you're printing, which you can't, you would never do on a computer, which is actually overprint, the effect of it, the layers. And it, it, to me, it carries very much that the idiosyncraticness of the human hand, not the style on us of a computer. So I just start off with getting hold of the letter forms and then working out how to make them work. So you design with the actual trophies first, and then you begin to work out what to do with them when you print them. And this is just the trophies get overprinted for things like highly commended. Uh, and that's not what you're meant to do on a, on a fag proofing press, but who cares? So, and looks like we hit it in the right place. So this became quite, was quite an interesting experimentation and it was creating things which really did feel like they were human. And then there's a lot, the photographs taken of all the bits of the chases get used in now in all the social media. Um, so it's big, big builds it up. And then this, this year, the, uh, the winners all had um, on social media holding their chases. And the highly recommended and the runners up get printed certificates. 
and there's a limited edition print of the actual chase because I'm beginning to, I think the chases look amazing. The other project which really got me into thinking about what you learn by working with your hands and with your body, and not just looking at a computer and trying to work out what font and what it looks like, is the fact that with metal, it's got an inherent system. It's the history of typesetting going back 500 years. And what I did is I went to four um, three composing rooms. This one's at Winterbourne House and Garden. The other one was at, using the type from the type archive. And the other two were set at Stonehouse um, in Gloucestershire. And one of the things you learn when you're setting with working with metal and setting with metal, which you don't learn on a computer, is how the spacing works, how the letters go together. You can't put them tighter. They, they go where they go by nature of a set of the, the type. And what I was doing by working out how to play with this stuff is actually sort of free falling and using whatever was in the composing room, doing things I'd never actually do at sitting at a computer designing with type. And of course, you'd never put them where it spaces it because you'd sort of fiddle it where you want it on a computer. This shows the finished chase of the first um, poem. The four poems I set all had the word love in it, which I then decided to pull out in wood type. So that's the half title for the book. I ended up making a book about it and writing about the whole thing. And actually how fascinating I think it becomes when you actually start seeing the metal and how you space it and how you use it. And this just shows the, uh, the first page of the book. And what you can do, to, I think, to get students involved with type is to get them to play, play games with it, overprint it, underprint it. Each one of these books I've done has a, a unique um, frontispiece. Um, and the idea here was to make something which would be unique to every book. The book's called, title of it is Love of Typography and Letter Forms and Poetry. And the first chase I did uh, is the case of a Winterbourne Press chase. And, and once you start looking, I think, re-looking at what metal looks like, it's quite fascinatingly beautiful. And you begin to work, you know, you begin to see the spacing materials and how the metal dictates to you where you space and what you do. It's got an inherent system. You wouldn't naturally do that on a computer. And it has a, it has a human aspect as it's punched into the paper and leaves like a tiny halo around it. So, this was having the fun of actually um, printing all the different, I had to do 50 different ones and looking at the paper. The paper comes from, from paper I've picked up in Malaysia, prayer paper, and over printing it at angles and things. It, it to me, creates something quite fascinating and each print is unique. And that's it actually how I did it on the, uh, on the, the uh, chase on the press and then by using the same sheet you then build up other things which you would which begin to me become very visually interesting that's showing it going in actually into the uh, arab press positioning them before in place um, so after that there's the four poems um, and each poem starts with a number, so it's one, and it's actually on a, on a tissue paper. So this is the first poem, but you're putting together fonts and doing things you'd never do it at a computer. And I think what it does from that point of view, draws students into learning about spacing. They learn to work with their body and hands, learn to manipulate things. They see how things put together. And also this is quite, I'd never designed normally typographically like this. And you wouldn't sit in a computer. And again, this is another one of those poems. There's four in total. But the visual effect and the way things don't line and the things go together gives it that, uh, I think, quite unique quality. And the history of typesetting, you would never do this. You weren't allowed in a composing room, let alone go punk and free fall. And just how you lock up and get the type to work 
you learn the students would learn a lot and one and also learn by actually what happens um so i've never put old english quote marks around gill before and actually how you work with sticks and measures and how you actually have to lock up tight to get it to work and this inherentness of you can't place things where you want but they're dictated i think also builds up into some very humanistic form um but of course no one was allowed to play games like this it, it, it would wreck a compliment normally so poem four then there's two, every book's got two pages of what i call visual art i want someone to actually stop not read it because as soon as you engage with the with reading you don't look at it visually so the idea really here is I, I don't want you to read it i just want you to visually look at it using that overprinting and underprinting so to me this begins to make quite a fascinating way of, of working so that's the same poem back backed up upside down and it's about actually producing something completely visual randomly after what you've already done randomly. And it takes you into a different world than it does on a computer. At the back, and then the four poems are specified. So you see the four poems and they've all got what specification. You then get the winter ball chase. So this is the double page spread with a gatefold. And you actually get the whole chasing in it. Because part of this is I want to actually get people to understand that the whole thing is, is actually three-dimensional. You've got to know how to justify tight, even if you range it left to lock it up. So none of it falls out when you lift the chase. Uh, that's the front of the chase. And that's the back of the chase. And again, it's just a showing how that works. Going back to layouts, this is a layout I did years ago. Um, which working under Anthony, which was to do with thin mid thick, which is the spacing material. So when you go to justify line of type, these are the visual increments you need to do thin mid thick um, forward. And man, I put that in the book with an explanation about it. That's the cover, it has eight printings. And again, it's just randomly putting things together, which you could never achieve. Uh, if you sat down and tried to do it because you it'd get too considered. And I think what students would learn would be fall in love with printing. Once you fall in love with the magic of actually printing and inking things up, once you've got a student inherently enjoying making images and making things work, then it's a lot easier to teach them the nitty gritty of typography. And that's the back of the book. It's just called Love. And I'd like to say thank you for listening to me. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this job. Thank you. Bye-bye.